Hi, welcome all uh, to the exciting session of uh, FinTech presentations. When Allah, uh, I'm excited to see you all. I wish you is the same uh, with my presentation. Uh, I'm Shiva Indukuri. My paper is on impact of digital currency and uh, RTPS on US dollar as a global currency. Let us quickly go through it. So when I'm saying this, so what is that I am referring to? Uh, digital currency means it's cryptocurrency, stable coins, CBDCs, and uh, real-time transactions. They're also known with uh, different names, uh, like uh, real-time uh, payment system, uh, real-time settlements, and so on. Then to start uh, with, first is uh, crypto. Uh, I think we all are aware of it. We got valuable inputs in our printing sessions uh, through a lot of research uh, papers, presentations, discussions, case studies. Thanks to Dr. Douglas coming on this with your valuable inputs and uh, feedback in every, in every week. Uh, so, but still, I try to give you some insights into this at my end. Crypto is an individual coin ownership uh, uh, where the transaction records are stored in a uh, digital ledger which is a computerized database in a decentralized network with strong cryptography so why it is all done the reason is to secure the transaction records verify the transfer of coin ownership then control the creation of additional uh, coins uh, cryptos uh, don't have a central issuing or uh, regulating authorities like a federal bank here in us uh, cryptos are not considered to be currencies in the traditional sense because uh, it cannot be maybe some countries offer may be looking forward to accept it as a, a, a medium of exchange and store of value but many countries they uh, they didn't i will explain you that in the coming slides and it is a decentralized system for verifying that the parties to uh, transaction have the money uh, they claim uh, so this decentralized system was catchy and attracted the attention of everyone. Uh, it eliminates the need for uh, traditional intermediaries like uh, banks and, and other financial institutions uh, during the uh, funds transfer. So it is uh, swift and it doesn't involve any intermediaries. Uh, but uh, uh, though the word uh, cryptocurrency is used, it is actually not a currency uh, so for those reasons it, it it can be classified as a commodity the like commodity when when we say commodity it could be gold silver or agro products or crude oil that's all this all belong to commodities then securities it could be an equity share a bond and a debenture a derivative a financial derivative and currency itself it could be so this reminds me our case discussion uh, 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 I, uh, uh, ripple case study yeah, if you remember we had this it had a lawsuit filed against uh, uh, itself uh, by sec where uh, the judgment has given uh, positively and negatively both because uh, the judgment said that uh, the XRP sales to institutional investors can be considered as uh, uh, securities. Otherwise, it is a commodity. So that way, crypto is a commodity security also. That reminded me the ripple case, case in our earlier discussions. Then uh, little evolution of cryptocurrencies. Uh, it was first published the model uh, the concept uh, the technology it was published in a research paper by uh, satoshi nakamoto with a pseudonymous uh, uh, name at that time i don't know the reason maybe someone that it is a weird paper why should we publish this kind of maybe then uh, uh, it was uh, issued as uh, with the name bitcoin by satoshi nakamoto then the first time ever a crypto transaction was done one year after its issue, uh, when a programmer purchased uh, uh, Papa John's pizzas uh, 
uh, with 10,000 Bitcoins equivalent to $30 at that time in May 2008, uh, 2010 is worth of $82 million in 2018. And uh, when it has reached the high of 53,000 at the time. Uh, today, as of now, there are uh, close to 23,000 uh, uh, cryptocurrencies uh, active. Then uh, some interesting facts. Uh, uh, El Salvador is the only country which has accepted a crypto uh, Bitcoin as the medium of exchange. So it is a currency. Uh, then it is legal in um, uh, 111 countries uh, in USA, UK, UAE, Switzerland, Japan, Germany, to mention few. And uh, in countries like uh, Russia, India, and China, it was earlier banned. But seeing the importance and popularity of crypto, they allowed it, but uh, restrictions. So that way, there are uh, 10 countries uh, which have allowed crypto but uh, with a uh, lot of restrictions and regulations taxes and so on then 28 countries uh, didn't uh, neither allowed uh, in, in 28 countries it is neither uh, legal nor illegal uh, and uh, nine countries have banned uh, uh, crypto so the same thing it is plotted uh, uh, through the map you can see more of a green color that is 111 countries uh, where it is uh, legal and yellow color uh, it is restricted you can see India and China it includes India and China the top in uh, currencies uh, to look at uh, I think I think most of you are aware of this but still I presented this is the list of top 10 uh, currencies in terms of market capitalization so if you look at Bitcoin, the price is $36,000. I think a few months back, it came down to 20,000 plus or 23,000. I thought of buying that, but couldn't buy because of some reason now it is 36,000. So we all are greedy. <laughs> uh, so the 36,344 price times the volume, which is 25.59 billions makes it 710.34 uh, uh, billions as the market capitalization so number one is uh, btc usd followed by ethereum tether and uh, others uh, according to bis bank for international settlements the major advantages of cryptocurrency are transactional freedom it is easy it's private and confidential and there are no geographical or time restrictions uh, it is across the world unless and until it is banned or it is illegal and there is no time restriction 24 by 7 it is available then financial inclusion because of the technology through smartphones and uh, uh, crypto is uh, operated through smartphones or laptops or any other digital uh, gadgets uh, it can it has reached even the small uh, small smaller of the smallest uh, with the lowest income levels if someone wants to try and the, the and how the dreams to make some money uh, uh, avoiding uh, regulators like sec or federal reserve bank and so on then short settlement time it is instant almost instant and it is along with the equity gold bullion other bullion and real estate it is also a part of the portfolio of many investors it hedges it is a kind of hedge against inflation because it is nowhere related to the foreign currency or gold reserves it is it happens by its own so when uh, when come i think inflation most of you are aware uh, so that problem is not there with the uh, cryptocurrency and major factor here is the cross border payments I think this is the major point where I am looking at as a threat, uh, a threat of uh, crypto to global currencies, including the US dollar, as it can substitute. Because if this becomes a cross-border payments, more countries start accepting it, uh, making it legal, and they and more countries. Today we have only one country as minimum of exchange. 
in future if it becomes more than one 10 100 and so on i think global currency currencies uh, they have a problem Mm. the next one is the stable coins um, stable coins are a little different from uh, 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 cryptocurrencies uh, which you discussed including bitcoin the value is pegged uh, with another currency uh, like uh, i mean fiat currency both are same i mean sorry value is pegged with another cryptocurrency or fiat currency or commodity or any other financial instrument like equity share or interest rates and so on bonds or debentures notes treasury bills and so on then it could be an alternative to highly volatile cryptocurrencies like bitcoin i think the main aim is that only when you look at bitcoin we just discussed the volatility of from from nothing to 53000 came back to 23000 again it is 36000 so this is huge so to uh, eliminate this kind of volatility so that this can become a medium of exchange i think uh, stable coins were uh, very aggressive so the aim is to become the medium of exchange suitable for common transactions so this may tackle the price fluctuations uh, by tying the value of cryptocurrency to other most more stable assets I think we already discussed on that. The types of uh, 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 stable coins have fiat money collateralized, crypto collateralized, algorithmic. Let's see one by one quickly. Uh, fiat money collateralized is uh, uh, with any currency, maybe mostly people are using uh, US dollar. The aim is to make it uh, more stable. The best examples are Tether, Terrell USD. And true USD. These are the popular. You can check out the prices and so on. What is their collateral and so on. You'll get more also. Then the crypto collateralized is uh, collateral is uh, another cryptocurrency. It could be Bitcoin or Ethereum and so on. And mostly the collateral is two times the stable coin. For example, if uh, uh, Bitcoin is the collateral, then uh, if Bitcoin is one million dollar worth is a collateral, then half a million dollar worth of uh, stable coin will be issued. That is that is what we mean by two is to one. So in future it could be this ratio could be more than that or less than that. So some good examples of uh, uh, crypto collateralized are uh, Ethereum, uh, collateralized uh, Makers DAO DAI, and wrapped Bitcoin. And uh, Third one, the last one in stablecoin is algorithmic stablecoin. It may hold reserve assets or fiat money. It could either this or that. Tether is a popular one, stablecoin back to US dollar on a one is to one ratio. And it is also backed by gold reserves. It could also be backed by gold reserves. And the example is Terra USD back to uh, USD and uh, Luna token and some interesting facts I just uh, presented how the prices came down you can go with the more details for yourself and finally this is uh, uh, what I wanted to present and talk more about CBDCs central bank digital currencies when we say this we should know about more about uh, CBDCs uh according to um, many countries even central banks in different countries, they themselves are not clear about it but still to define in their own sense to some extent we can generalize them it's a digital form of a, a country's fiat currency uh, it also has a claim on the central bank similar to a, a physical coins and uh, 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 paper notes instead of printing or minting money the central bank issues electronic coins uh, or accounts uh, backed by the full faith and credit of the government which happens with any currency in the world 
uh, it is issued by a central bank not by private people or pure regulation is there here the whole intermediate process is here important regulatory body is there central bank of a country in us it is federal reserve bank in uk it is bank of england in india it is reserve bank of india they take care of it uh, but according to bis uh, his uh, views are very precious to know cbdc is not a well defined term it's a digital form of central bank money that is different from balances in uh, traditional reserves or settlement accounts so it is used to refer to several concepts it still it is not clear what exactly is that uh, these confusions come because one central bank says we want to uh, use this uh, uh, mm, to bring down the fake money one one country may say its priority could be they want more uh, transactions other country may say they want uh, uh, real time transactions for transparency and uh, uh, financial inclusion kind of so based on this why cbdc is not clear it really it is related to several concepts uh, it is envisioned by uh, most to be a new form of central bank money obviously as a central bank liability denominated in an existing unit of account which serves as both as a medium of exchange and store of value so it is the same the cbdc or the fiat currency it's the same it is also a kind of fiat currency so this mix of new and already existing forms of central bank money makes it challenging to precisely define what a cbdc is so is that one is to one ratio to be printed or issued when cbdc issues so all things will come in the uh, nearest future there is an interesting paper of uh, beck and garrett in 2007 adopted by bis which gives the concept of money flower uh, explaining where does the cbdc stand uh, you can see uh, different uh, types of currencies yellow or uh, orange is token based green is central bank issued blue is digital currency and red is widely accessible you think that the gray colored in the venn diagram this is what uh, cbdc refers to it includes cb accounts cb digital tokens cb digital tokens general purpose or uh, retail so when we say general purpose it is for all it could be retail also so others you all are aware cash bank deposits uh, and in, in the digital side you have a private digital tokens wholesale only uh you can see the top 20 currencies in the world dominated by us dollar followed by euro japanese yen sterling and so on uh you can see oil exports imports or oil trades are the one of the major uh, import uh, trade components for any country but you don't find a uh, um, currency of uh, middle east uh, like saudi arabia qatar who are uh, no, no, biggest one of the biggest in uh, natural gas or crude oil you don't find their uh, 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 currency here the reason here is they trade in terms of dollars us dollar so my point here of saying that is in the same way in future something substitutes us dollar or euro or japanese yen or sterling uh, could be have of a low value compared to that so that part was about uh, uh, digital uh, uh, currencies now the second dimension is the real time payment systems so they are known with uh, different names like uh, real time uh, uh, transactions rtts uh, real time uh, systems virtual payment systems and so on but let us use this for the time being so it is all about uh, using technology for uh, instant uh, uh, clearing and uh, settlement among the banks it or financial institutions this saves time uh, and secures a payment with a low cost uh, to the retail as well as wholesale that is businesses uh, this uh, rtps systems they utilize different channels uh, like uh, online computers uh, websites smartphones tablets atms and uh, bank branches Uh, with technology and uh, funds availability is instant almost the if you take a loan deposit cash uh, final settlements everything is instant 
in, uh, some evolution of this first it has seen through a uh, zengin system of japan in 1973 at the same time uh, uh, i think uh, federal white white transfers federal where something was there in us also but uh, zengin system was attributed as the first system of uh, rtps uh, it also had different systems like rtgs and nds and rtts in the uh, as the decades passed on by 2000 uh, europeans were there uh, uh, in rtps by 2010 india and china most populous uh, countries uh, on this planet they joined uh, rtps since then uh, it has become so active and uh, reachability is uh, too deep availability is instant uh, throughout uh, the day and night RTGS is something for more for banks. Banks started using RTGS system for the uh, huge sizes of uh, uh, interbank uh, uh, payments and settlements. So initially it was uh, with the USA started by USA, later followed by UK and France till 1985, and by 2005 it it was 90 90 central banks, and by now I think it is more than 130 central banks using. RTGS. Yes. One more thing uh, in, in in addition to RTGS, uh, we also have something called as a net deferred settlement, which is widely accepted uh, system in India and China. So the difference here is in RTGS it is gross, and in NDS it is net. Difference between the total inflow and outflow between the banks that is settled instead of paying the whole of payment and receiving the whole thing, they just net it out and uh, settle the net amount. Minus or plus. So it said it it gets settled uh, uh, based on a specific uh, debit or credit balance with a particular counterparty at a specific intervals. Uh, this is used uh, in different countries, uh, including uh, India and China. I missed it out. Regrets for that. Since the clearing authority can adjust a settlement cycle. Uh, multiple times a day it may cause banks to experience liquidity shortfall sometimes not all the times there is a scope for that and now this is interesting and this is my big point uh, uh, for my topic rtts uh, real time transactions they are increasing day by day and uh, india and china are neck to neck competitors uh, on this you can see india is the leader in this Uh, followed by china south korea thailand uk nigeria japan brazil us and mexico uh, this is by 2020 the data could be little updated uh, but i am i am working on that but almost the uh, india and china remain in the same place they are the top two um and this is uh, some interesting composition of a uh, uh, country digital adoption index it, it, this is a little older in 2017 at the time india was the lowest you can see there but now it has beaten even the digital adoption also you can see china is also in the bottom with 47 percentage india is with 32% south korea was the topper with 75% now the things have changed i think somehow i missed that i think it is the other way it could be right now uh so again uh, uh the systems uh, the rtt systems uh, if you t- if you take in india it is uh, upi unified payment interface uh, in china it is imps thailand prompt pay uk fast payments nigeria nip japan zengin system us zil brazil pix australia npp Uh, again the same picture is reflected uh, in the bar chart this is in 2021 is i was telling you that in 2020 i think south korea was the third country but uh, here you can see thailand was the third country but the first and second were india and china so respective colors are given for the uh, uh, years 2018 19 20 20 21 i think in 2021 i think it is huge you can see that in india Then, uh, it all started with uh, npca in india national payment corporation of india which launched the imps uh, immediate payment services to enable quick transactions 
Then later in 2016, Unified Payment Interface was launched to skip the uh, payment uh, bank details while you know, doing the payments, uh, monetary payments. Then in 2000, it was so attractive and quick that by 2018, it has 3.9 billion transactions. It didn't stop there. In 2021, it was 34.2 billion transactions. And uh, major firms are uh, phone pay. Uh, it was owned by Flipkart, later acquired by uh, uh, Walmart, followed by uh, Google Pay and Paytm. These are the top three players in India. They, they encash the opportunity. And uh, by 2023, uh, the verticals got uh, into different areas, including auto debit, even public issues. Investors started using UPI. It, it, you have overdrafts, ODs now through UPI, utility payments, insurance, stalls, recurring payments, loan fund transfers, and many more are in the UPI and uh, more to come. So it is there equally, I think 50, uh, the share of uh, UPI is both into retail as well as uh, wholesale, P2P as well as P2B. And it is forecasted that uh, by 2025, the coming two years, it will be more than 85 billion transactions through UPI, that is huge. So now, interesting here is, if respective RTTs in India, China are limiting themselves to, to their own country, that's not a big worry for the global currencies. But if these transactions cross the borders and they do international transactions, that is a big threat for global currencies like US dollar, Euro, Euro dollar and the sterling pound. So what the reason here is, interestingly, India was more focused, India and China are more focused on this. India had uh, 36 countries uh, agreeing upon uh, to use uh, Indian rupee through UPI system for their transactions. I just gave you the list here. It includes uh, Bhutan, Belgium, France, Luxembourg, Malaysia, Nepal, Netherlands, Oman, Qatar, Russia, uh, Singapore, so Sri Lanka, Switzerland, UAE, and UK. I think uh, during this, uh, the, the big boost for India was uh, because due to Ukraine war, when um, Russia was, uh, uh, Russia had sanctions, many stopped buying oil from Russia. Uh, India had two uh, advantages, one shot, two birds, uh, I can say. How it happened was, uh, first thing is, along with China, it came forward to buy Russian oil. That is the major advantage at the lowest price. At the lowest price. It, uh, throw a price very cheaper price so and india started importing crude oil from uh, uh, um, russia and from here refine it and started selling exporting the refined oil to european countries that is a big business model uh, boosted indian economy and that is the first one second one is india mandated that it has to accept uh, indian rupee for the payments for which russia said uh, yes for that so in these two ways, India got uh, benefited and we have to wait and see what happens in the coming years, post-war uh, days or years. Uh, then in India, I was mentioning uh, uh, phone pay, Google Pay, uh, Paytm. These are the top 10 apps uh, with their respective uh, uh, transactions um, in terms of values and millions. Phone pay had 47% in in transactions and 49% uh, in terms of value, it, it ranks number one. You can see the other things. Finally, conclude crypto, stable coins, CBDC, RTTs, regional currencies. These are the five factors influencing major currencies' dominance. Cryptos are more of an asset form substituting equity, gold, and real estate as of now. It could be a threat if become a, a medium of exchange. Stable coins, which are alternative to cryptocurrency for uh, uh, volatility issues, have the potential to become a medium of exchange or store of value. And CBDC is the future currency. Of course, for domestic, uh, in the domestic scenario, that's not a problem. But once the cross-border trade happens and CBDCs enter into other countries, for their uh, uh, trade pathways. 
then rtt's sole fund transfer medium uh, in most of the countries including india and china uh, domestically and will be aggressive in international payments in the coming years regional currencies uh, when uh, again the negotiations uh, as i exemplified uh, the negotiations between india and china uh, i'm sorry russia and india to accept indian rupee i think uh, this kind of, i think this may happen with opec countries uh, uh, with brics brics economies it, ha it there was a plan but because of some reasons it didn't happen but uh, india and china are very much focused and strong on pushing their currency into the other markets if that happens i think uh, that is a big threat i think with that uh, i conclude my views on uh, digital currencies and uh, rtts or rtps as a threat to the global currencies importantly us dollar in the coming years so i wish uh, you had a uh, good inputs on this you enjoyed my session uh, i love to see your doubts or queries or questions based on this title and you can also send me your uh, valuable alternatives guiding factors or inputs or motivational uh, uh, stories if you have some suggestions supplements and any other of source any kind of sources of information uh, related to this please email me to uh, the email id given s indukuri 2023 at the red fau dot uh, edu thank you once again Good luck for the rest of you. Bye-bye.